ಉತ್ತರೋಪಚಿರ್ಗೋಪ್ತಾ ಜ್ಞಾನಗಮ್ಯ ಪುರಾಥನ ನೀತಿ ಸುನೀತಿ ಶುದ್ಧಾತ್ಮ ಸೋಮ ಸೋಮರಥ ಸುಖಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಶಿವ ಇಸ್ ಉತ್ತರ Uttara means the ultimate, the highest, the greatest, the best, whatever, uh, in every category, as far as leadership, knowledge, realization, power, I mean, whatever kind of beauty, lovingness, you know, <laughs> whatever you can come up with, he's at the top of that. So, because he is the ultimate, that means... anything that you do can be an avenue of approach to him and when you become very very good at it whatever it might be music art writing dance um meditation worship mantras anything you do could even be sports or whatever when you approach the top you start to realize something Well, one is that the top is very lonely. There aren't many people who are really at the top of their game, the top of human potential in any field. And also, a lot of people turn back, you know? It's just like if you were climbing a very high mountain like Mount Everest, and you get up near the top and you realize, holy cow, I'm going to have to really, like, go through hell here <laughs> you know a big effort a major effort to get to the top and i'm not going to do that i choose not to do that i choose not to put myself through that well it's the same way when you get to the top of anything you're near the top of anything you realize my god the actual effort needed to attain perfection in this is just astronomical it's infinite So you start to realize that God being the perfection of all these things whatever they are whatever field or endeavor whatever kind of effort or knowledge or being or whatever for him to be at the top of all of those is like yeah, it's beyond effort it's a matter of being so to become the best at anything you have to change your being and some people just aren't willing to do that i would wager that most people aren't willing to do that and that's why they remain mediocre average or less than average so to be the best of everything is a unique level of beingness that only shiva has even Brahma and Vishnu don't share his transcendence for example they couldn't find the top and bottom of the column of fire in the beginning of the universe so Shiva outclassed them in every regard then Gopatir Gopta Gopati has so many meanings i looked it up Here's the dictionary entry for Gopati. Go can mean round, it can mean earth, it can mean cows, it can mean so many things. And of course Pati means the lord, owner, protector and so on like that. And Goptr Goptr means protector specifically. So Gopati Gopta he is the pr- protector owner master uh, originator you know again whatever <laughs> whatever the top is he's it right so of the earth the cows and go i mean uh, gopati also refers to indra to vishnu uh to cowherds like krishna 
Um, it, it refers to so many things and people. But he's the master and protector of them all, whatever it is. And so he is like the origin of all wealth because he's the origin of all beings. And beings like cattle are considered to be the best form of wealth. Why? Because they reproduce automatically. <laughs> but here's an interesting point. Right now, the human population is approaching ridiculous levels on this planet. And uh, the response of nature is to decrease the fertility of the reproductive fluids of both the males and females. Easier to measure the males, but the females as well. And in this case, fertility is going down. The ability to reproduce is uh, getting less and less. And this is typical of animal populations in general that reach the limits of their environment or food supply or any other dependency that they tend to reduce their fertility, to reduce their population, and also there's an increase in non-reproductive sexual activity, like homosexuality and uh, sex as uh, eroticism instead of reproduction, it's artistic sex, um, creative sex, playful sex. So. This is going on in the human race. Why? Because we're not protecting the cows, especially. If we were protecting the cows, if we would keep our sense of compassion and gentleness, responsibility, if we saw ourselves as their protectors, instead, uh, we would be in much better shape. But, I mean... That's a topic for a whole other video. <laughs> and then jnana gamya. Jnana gamya means attainable by pure knowledge and realization. Jnana means realization of the self. Aham brahmasmi shivo ham. That actually there is no explanation for awareness. The fact that we are aware and what to speak of consciousness when we are aware of something. But pure awareness of awareness, that's Turiya. And when it becomes permanent and separate from awareness of other things, consciousness, that's Turiya Tita. That's the ultimate. That's Brahman. That's practically the definition of Brahman. So this is self-realization, jnana gamya. And when we get that, we get him as a bonus. Puratana, he's the oldest. He's the original person. He's the ancestor. He's the progenitor. Shakti, his wife, is the mother of all. And he is the father. So they are together, the eldest. But he is even older than her. Niti, suniti. Niti is like justice, fairness, law, legality, uh, what's right and wrong. In fact, there's a whole category of Vedas called Niti Shastra that are just about this, Vedic laws, and, of course, everything is based on cow protection and self-realization. So, the niti and then suniti means one who is expert in administering the principles of law and justice. So, he is like the final arbiter, the final authority, the last court of appeals, and back in the days of uh, Being Integrity series, I characterized him as the judge in the court of truth, in the hall 
of silence. Puratana, niti suniti, sudhatman. Sudhatman means he is of pure soul, pure spirit. There's nothing material about him. Although he does expand in the rudra forms to have an interface and an influence on the material world, he is primarily pure spirit, both Shiva and Shakti. In fact, she even says in the uh, Sriman Devi Bhagavatam that she doesn't like to appear in the physical world. She likes to remain unmanifest because this is her nature as consciousness. Then Soma. Now Soma, again, has so many meanings. It can mean the moon. It can mean the Soma plant, the Vedic psychedelic. It can mean, in, in this case, it's probably more like Sa-Uma. In other words, along with Uma, his consort, his wife, he is always with her. They are inseparable. Wherever one is, <laughs> the other one is also. So they are never apart. They are a moiety, a, an apparent duality, which is actually one thing. So they are together, so ma, uh, sa uma, soma. And somarata, somarata means. He is even greater than Soma. He's greater than everything, of course. But in this case, specifically, he is beyond even the best tastes, the best nectar. Huh? He's beyond like drugs and things like that. I mean, his taste is superior to everything. Soma. Soma Rati. So then finally, Sukhim, happy being. He is happy by nature. See, Brahman is automatically Sat, Chit, Ananda, eternal being, eternal consciousness or awareness, pure awareness and bliss, Ananda. And this is not just ordinary, temporary happiness type bliss. This is what Buddha called sukhitatta, uh, that one is happy in one's soul, in one's being, in one's consciousness. Yeah, This is the kind of happiness he has. And when we associate with him by means of chanting these thousand names or chanting the five-syllable mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, we feel this happiness or we imbibe this happiness or we soak up this happiness by osmosis <laughs> from being in his presence. So that's why people who perform sadhana glorifying these holy names are always happy. Try it. You'll see. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>